The focus in Australia for the last 15 or so years has all, all been around illicit drugs, cannabis, uh, apps, all sorts of um, illegal drugs. But over the last um, 10 years, we've been, the ADF in particular has been trying to put alcohol on the agenda. That's the drug that causes the most harm in Australia by a long way, uh, but it's been very difficult. But what's changed in the last six months with our change of government has been the change in focus on drugs. Suddenly alcohol has become number one priority, along with tobacco. Some of our more recent achievements, we've re worked really hard over the last 10 years to get alcohol on the map, and, and whilst we can't claim that we've done that, we've certainly contributed to that. We picked up uh, some money from the Prime Minister's binge drinking strategy and today there's been some big announcements in Australia about um, this was part of the $14 million allocated for the community sector and there's been an announcement today of another $7 million worth of grants to, to support the, the Prime Minister's binge drinking strategy. The uh, Distilled Spirits Council of Australia managed to get the, um, the tax on RTDs reduced. They reduced around from $50 to, to $1.50 per uh, 330 mil drink. This is what happened as a result of that. The consumption of RTDs in Australia went through the roof. That's 13.7 uh, litres of alcohol per person in 2003 and that compared to a whole lot of other countries including 7.7 uh, litres in New Zealand. And one of the things we've really pushed hard on and I've worked hard to get the alcohol and drug field together so that we put one submission into this taxation review to change the way alcohol is taxed in Australia. There's a whole range of different ways it's taxed and we need to make it much more consistent and we also need to make it focused around reducing harm. In the last three months, the Minister for Health in Australia set up the National Preventative Health Task Force. But the aim of this task force was to reduce uh, a range of health harms in Australia. And our initial focus is on tobacco, alcohol and obesity. So the evidence is clearly showing that regulating physical availability, taxation and pricing, drink driving countermeasures and treatment and early intervention work. This is the risk levels of risky drinking with young women and you can see that the young women here are actually in the 14 to 19 year old age group actually drinking more than young males. Mm -hmm. So there's been this enormous increase in RTD consumption and we know they've focus, been focused at young women and uh, clearly the, the, uh, the figures are showing that's had some impact. This is a very interesting slide looking at the number of liquor licences that have been um, granted in Victoria. In 1986 there's around 600 of these licences which were uh, on-premises licences. Now there's, uh, in 2003, there's just under 5,000. Now, everyone familiar with the Bernie doll? This is what we call a Bernie doll. Uh, the Bernie was um, the Australian Test Cricketer, he used to open for Australia. He holds a record for the most number of cans consumed on the trip between uh, Australia to London. And I think it's 46 cans of full strength beer. So this is the whole, one of the, one of the big issues that we're involved in is this whole issue of sport and alcohol. This next slide is um, the slide out of uh, the annual report of one of our level three good sports clubs. And you can see the difference in focus. We've got our elite sport all celebrated around booze and you can see what their focus is. Their focus is around young kids. So the, this is um, the sort of focus we take with the Good Sports Program. It's about helping clubs understand that when they start playing with the focus around alcohol in their clubs and actually get focused on developing a culture around young kids and women, that um, you actually can turn your club around and actually attract a lot more people into the club. We did some research back in 2000 in a major metropolitan football league in, in Melbourne. Uh, there were 670 sample uh, surveys done. 7% of the sample drank at least 10 full strength stubbies every time they went to the club. And 13% of the under 20s did the same as well. So it's not uncommon in Australia for a, a club to raffle off a uh, trailer load of beer or a wheelbarrow load of spirits. And so we talk to clubs around the message that sends to their local community about what's important in the club. Um, Non-good sports clubs around, average around 5.86 standard drinks and that decreases to level three around 2.5. There's a whole lot of other research I could have shown you here. Clearly drink driving decreases, risky drinking decreases. You attract more club members. You get more players, not significant, you know, it's not a huge number of players. You get more teams. 
but you get significantly more females and non-players involved in clubs. And what that tends to do then is open up a whole range of new revenue streams for clubs. So rather than just flogging alcohol in the club because that's the easiest thing to do, there's other things that clubs can do. We keep being called wowsers or party poopers, but at the end of the day we are trying to change culture in the com community and make it a safer place to be. And this is my challenge to the Australian Preventative Health Task Force. It's nice to have a vision. At the end of the day, it's got to be combined with venture. It is not enough to stare up the steps. You must step up the stairs. And that's where I'll leave it. Thank you.